TCC, welcome to our online service. My name is Becca and this is Sylvia, and we are so glad that you tuned in to worship with us here today. That's right, and we're going to throw it back to the band on stage in just a minute, but before we do, we want to let you know about a couple of resources available to you. We have a lot going on at and through TCC on a weekly basis, and that is going to increase even more as we begin a new ministry year here in just a few short weeks. We want to make sure you're aware of all the opportunities to plug in, get connected, and serve because at TCC, we're a community of contributors and not consumers. We hold that God has equipped each one of us with gifts in order to serve His church. As followers of Christ, we are all His ambassadors and members of His body who work together in unity to build one another up and advance the kingdom of God. We are not spectators. We are not consumers. We are active participants who faithfully use our gifts and services to Him. So whether you are exclusively an online attender or just watching online this week while you're away, we pray you will be a part of our mission to be disciples of Jesus and to make disciples. So as we mentioned, there are a couple of ways that you can make sure you're staying up to date with all the latest from around TCC. First of all, our weekly email sent every Thursday is by far the best place to get all the dates, details, and updates. And if you're not yet subscribed to that email and would like to be, just fill out a connect form on our website or contact our office this week and we'll get you added to the list. Secondly, do you follow us on social media yet? Check us out on Instagram and Facebook for a look at all the fun stuff happening around TCC. And lastly, if this is your first time tuning in to TCC online, 
or you want to learn more about the mission and vision of Tulare Community Church, I urge you to reach out to our office this week. We would love to meet you and see how we can come alongside you in life, prayer, and ministry. But whether you are new to TCC or already part of our family, we're so glad that you're here with us today. We're going to throw it back to the band on stage as we continue our time of worship. Have a wonderful week. Take it away, team.
See, at the end of last year, I had the honor to share a sermon with the church called Give Me Eyes to See and Ears to Hear. Coming into this new year as a family, one of our prayers has been to give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And what we're asking the Lord to do when we pray this prayer is that the Lord may reveal himself to our family throughout our days, weeks, and months as we live out our faith at work, school, and play. We pray this over our whole family and even our church. So let us pray before we go into our passage this morning. We understand that the only way for someone to understand the kingdom of God, you first must have eyes to see and ears to hear. And the only way someone can do that is through the Holy Spirit. So this morning, open your Bibles to Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of the great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Before we dive into the text this morning, I want to take a moment and talk about what a parable is and then why Jesus spoke in parables. See, the root word of parable comes from the Greek word para, which means alongside. So basically, a parable is a story laid alongside the truth. So basically, a parable is a story that tells a biblical truth. If you know me, then you know that I love stories, and I love how Jesus would share parables to describe his kingdom. Throughout the book of Matthew, we will notice a common theme, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven should be important to us. Like Pastor Ryan said last week in his sermon, then in the book of Matthew, we see Jesus use a parable to describe the kingdom of heaven 32 times. We know that the kingdom of heaven has great importance. As you look at the parables Jesus shared, they either concern God's people or God's kingdom. Jesus always was trying to bring us into deep relationship with him. He loves you and I so much. So that leads me to my sermon title this morning. If we have Jesus, we have everything we need. Let that guide you as we unpack today's text. As Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven, there was always an invitation to people in scripture, but not everyone can see or hear what was going to take place. See, in Matthew chapter 13, we begin to get a picture to as why he spoke in parables. So the Bible reads that the disciples came to him and asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever ha will be given more and will have an abundance, whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. This is why he spoke to them in parables. Through seeing, they did not see, Through, though hearing, they did not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For the people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are you, your eyes, because you see, and your ears, because you hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. We easily can miss out on what the Spirit of God is doing if we don't allow Him to show us through prayer and slow reading of Scripture. To this passage, we will be focusing on a short parable, but a very powerful one. See, it reveals so much of who Jesus truly is. See, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. 
Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. What is the common theme in this parable? What is Jesus referring to when he is speaking about this treasure and pearl? As I read this passage slowly, the first thing that stands out to me is not that these men sold everything they own, but why did they sell everything they had? See, the beauty of this parable is not just that they sold everything, but that they had discovered there's something greater in value that, than anything that they possess. Jesus, is desired, Jesus desires us to value him above anything else in this world. There is such a freedom knowing that Jesus can sustain me and my family. These men's eyes were open to the truth of who Jesus truly is. You see, if we have Jesus, we have everything we need. This week I had dinner with a gentleman who had recently started connecting to the body of TCC East. This man and his family just moved from Ventura, California to the Central Valley. And as I spoke to him over dinner, I could see there was something different about him. He shared with me that back in Ventura, he had the opportunity to be a part of a signed rock band. See, so this band had wrote many singles and were on their way to make some big moves in the music industry. Everything was going the right direction for this rock band. But it was one night after performing in a sold out event with tons of fans when he decided to lay down this dream down to truly follow Jesus. It was at that moment in front of tons of fans that he decided to leave his life behind and fully devote his life to following Jesus and enter into a path of being a pastor. See, not everyone understood him, but he understood that if we have Jesus, we have everything we need. There is nothing more valuable than a relationship with our creator, that the kingdom of God reveals our brokenness and the need for restoration in our lives. There is nothing in this world that can satisfy our thirst or fulfill our needs. The value system of the world is so different from the value system of God. The world teaches us to love money, sex, and power, but all that does is leaves us empty inside. In a book I recently started reading called Counterfeit Gods, the author Timothy Keller defines idols from multiple angles. He says the human heart is an idol factory. In the book, he says that the heart takes good things like a successful career, love, material possessions, and even family, and turns them into ultimate things. Our heart defies, defies them as the center of our lives because we think they can give us satisfaction and security, safety, and fulfillment if we attain them. I'm reminded of something I've learned in marriage counseling when I was much younger. Our marriage counselor told me these words that will always stay with me. I share these words with you and other couples that have recently got married and engaged. My counselor mentor once said to me, your wife cannot satisfy you fully in life, but the only person that can do that will always be Jesus. What he meant was there is nothing in the world that can satisfy my soul like Jesus can, not even my wife. What the Holy Spirit is teaching us in Matthew is not to just sell everything, but we have to have Jesus at the most highest part of our life. But he's asking, do we truly value him in our life? If we have Jesus, we have everything we need. The only hope that matters is Jesus. And I want to end this morning with a story of a young girl that my wife just took to summer camp. So my wife is a coordinator for a nonprofit organization who mentors and walks alongside teen parents and specifically teen moms. This girl has been through some pretty crazy things at a young age. She is a very talented person who had, was very good at softball, but her dreams of playing at a collegiate level all changed when she got pregnant at the age of 17. See, life would change in a major way for this young lady. The following weeks, months, and years would be full of pain, but also joy. When my, my wife met her, she was only a few weeks pregnant and was coming out of a very abusive relationship. During her early stages of her, life, her, of her pregnancy, the father of her baby pulled out a gun on her and threatened to take her life while she was still pregnant. 
This painful time led to her to discover young lives and connect with my wife. This young girl recently had her baby and is being mentored by my wife and other amazing women who volunteer. Two weeks ago, my wife took over 10 girls and their babies to summer camp. This young girl also went with this group of young moms and she had to make a hard choice to either marry the father of her baby while he was still going to be spending time in county jail or give up everything she loves and values to follow Jesus. See, at Young Life's camp two weeks ago, five girls made a decision to follow Jesus. This young girl, who was one of them, also gave her life to the Lord. There is a transformation taking place in this young girl's life that to the world, it's hard to explain. But when you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you start to understand there is nothing greater than a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, God is inviting us into a deeper relationship with him this morning. What are we holding on a pedestal this morning that can not satisfy us or bring freedom to us, both physically and spiritually? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to sell and give away for the treasure and pearl that we know is a metaphor for Jesus. Jesus is our treasure, and we should after, go after him with all that we have. He's inviting us to take part of his kingdom, but first we have to hold him higher than anything else in our lives. See, the beauty of the gospel is that we cannot do this life alone. We need a savior to free us and deliver us from our own broken world. But if we have Jesus, we have everything we need. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word. I ask that you continue to show us and reveal yourself to us through your scripture, Lord. As we continue to uh, walk this life, Lord, may we continue to recognize that we want to hold you at the highest place of our life, Lord. You are our treasure. You are everything that we need in life, Lord. And with you, Lord, we... We can be overcomers, Lord, in so many ways in our lives, Lord. Touch our soul, touch our spirit this morning and continue to reveal our eye, our, you, who you are and open our eyes to see and our ears to hear as we continue to seek you and follow you, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. in
See, today's benediction comes from 2 Peter 3.18. It says, May you grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen.